Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. A very interesting peer-reviewed paper just came out that is looking at the overall intelligence of people. And it's in interestingly from about 1900 to about, you know, 1975, 1980, something like that, people tended to be getting uh, have, having a higher IQ over time. There was a gain of about three IQ points uh, per per decade. And this was pretty consistent and it was called the Flynn effect after a famous psychology, psychologist. And, you know, the way the IQ test is measured, 100 is sort of normal or average and the standard deviation on that is about uh, 14 or 15 IQ points. So there's, you know, bell curve distribution. But over time, you know, when they get people, you know, and they do vary the tests, the tests actually change a bit over time, and then they normalize them back to 100. But if people take, you know, a new test and an old test, and you can compare their results on that, and if you do that for a large enough, less, a large enough number of people, you can get some statistical analysis of it. So, but from about 1975 onward, people's IQ has now has been dropping. Um, and this is a, around the world. And this is a very interesting result. And, you know, there's theories as to why this is happening. Um, I have a theory of my own, which I'll talk about towards the end of this video. But, you know, people you know, aren't aren't dealing with climate change, you know, they're continuing to allow it to get worse and worse and threaten the entire planet and everything living on the planet. And, you know, that's really, really dumb. So I often wonder, you know, what's going on with society. And this paper um, very interestingly shows that IQs are, are dropping. Now, I want to just talk quickly before I get into this on some books I've been reading. So I have been thinking about IQ. So this is The Intelligence of Dogs, Canine Consciousness and Capabilities. Fascinating study of, you know, dogs and how to, how intelligent they are, how to train them, and so on. And interestingly, they rank the dogs in for obedience and so-called working intelligence, the trainability. So number one is the Border Collie, two is the Poodle, three is the German Shepherd, Four is the Golden Retriever. Five is the Doberman Pinscher, and it goes on and on. So this book was written in, um, I don't know, about 30 years ago. So they didn't have the things like, uh, like my dog is a Golden Doodle, a poodle, standard poodle father, uh, about 40 pound um, father, and a Golden Retriever mother, about 50 pounds. And Newton um, at six months is 50 pounds. He just got weighed today uh, because he got some uh, pills for um, heartworm and for, uh, I think, um, flea, fleas and ticks and Lyme disease. So anyway, this is all about the intelligence of dogs. Fascinating book. Um, I do a lot of walking. I think walking is one of the best things that you can do. Uh, it's something, you know, hopefully you can do, you know, even as you age. And so I got this book uh, at a used bookstore, In Praise of Walking, The New Science of How We Walk and Why It's Good for Us uh, by Shane O'Mara. And it's a fascinating book, like even the, the, the mechanics behind walking, you know, the comparison to a compound pendulum and things. It's very, very fascinating. And also, um, you know, how healthy walking is, not just physically, but for your emotional state, for your brain. Because, you know, we evolved uh, walking. We've been walking a long period of time. And when we walk, we take into things, you know, we take in a lot of um, things through our senses, what we hear, what we smell, what we can see. And our brain has kind of evolved to to have that being an optimal amount of information that we can take in. Um, and, uh, you know, it's very healthy to, to, to walk. We've been doing it since we evolved and, uh, you know, it's very, very uh, healthy. And there's numerous reasons for, you know, walking in a forest is the best because there's all these chemicals in the air 
which stimulate good feelings in your body. So it's a good way to deal with climate change while there's still forests. And uh, I try to get in a fiction book. I read this one recently, Robert Ludlum's The Treadstone Exile. Interestingly enough, um, you know, you have, I read a lot of Tom Clancy. You know, the title, the, the actual title of this book is called Robert Ludlum's The Treadstone Exile. That's the whole title because, you know, these guys, uh, you know, they pass on and somebody ends up, like this is written by Joshua Hood, you know, they, he write, this is the author of the book, but they put the original famous author at the top. So you think it's another book by this guy. So it's kind of, it's very much cheating, but lots of, lots of, uh, it happens with lots of authors these days, which is, you know, quite interesting. It's important to recognize, recognize what's going on. Okay, so let's get to uh, the um, topic here about sort of the dumbing down of society, the end of the Flynn effect. And, uh, you know, I'll get right into it. So this is a paper, or this is a, an article that came out. Everyone's IQ is dropping around the world and scientists can't figure out why, right? We're living in an age where access to knowledge and facts is at our fingertips. We can use our phones and computers to educate us, but there's something wrong. Instead of growing more intelligent, our IQs are dropping and they're dropping rapidly. So science is looking for answers as to why we're not getting any smarter. Now the Flynn effect, okay, is from through the, through the 20th century, from about 1900, like I said, up to about 1975, Humanity's IQ is going up. We were becoming smarter and smarter all the time. This uptick in the average IQ score became known as the Flynn effect. Okay, each decade, the average measured intelligence went up by about three points on the IQ scale. And experts believe that this impressive, this is a large rise actually. Um, okay, uh, so in 10 years, up three points, up about 0 0.3 IQ points per year. Um, and people believed it's due to uh, better education, improved nutrition and health, better health care. But then something happened, okay? That Flynn effect seems to be all over now. So there was a recent study, and I'll talk about this in detail, a team of researchers from Norway they looked at 230,000 IQ results of men who had joined the National Service between 1970 and 2009. For each generation, generation, okay, the score dropped about seven points on average. So in other words, you know, your kids' IQs were about seven point lower than yours. And when your kids ended up having kids, that was seven point slower. You know, a generation might be, what, 25 years? So, uh, you know, that would be a drop of, a, a similar drop, I guess, you know, if that was two and a half decades, that would be a, a similar drop, but the opposite direction to the, to the Flynn effect, the gain of three um, IQ points per, per decade. Okay, um, troubling. This doesn't exactly mean that we're getting dumber, but this hasn't stopped many experts from finding the results of the Norwegian study to be incredibly troubling for humanity. Okay, um, so, you know, there's a London-based researcher who's found similar results during his decades-long research. Um, there was a documentary called Tomorrow, Everyone's an Idiot, where, uh, where, where the claim is that we're becoming stupider. Okay, this is happening. It's not going to go away. And we have to try to think about what we're going to do about it. Okay, so it's interesting because we live in a world where we have all kinds of knowledge at our fingertips. We have easy access to facts and can educate ourselves with a few simple clicks of our phones and computers. So why is this not happening? Are our brains getting lazier because of all the electronics and screens, etc.? Okay, um, IQs are everywhere following. It's not just in some countries. Um, and uh, so the trends are not due to a changing composition of families. There is at most a minor role for explanations involving genes. 
for example, with immigration and something called dysgenic fertility. Okay, so I should explain what that term is, dysgenic fertility. Um, and where are we here? Uh, here we go. Dysgenic fertility. It's a negative association between people's intelligence and their number of children. So the idea was that your first kid was the smartest, then any subsequent kids after that were less and less smart. Okay, and that idea is called dysgenic fertility, and there's some evidence of that, you know, but I'll talk more about that, uh, you know, as we proceed. Another thing is environmental factors, um, largely fixed within families, like parental education, socialization effects of low uh, ability parents, family size, etc. Okay, um, so anyway, uh, there's other, they don't really know, like all of these things might be components. Um, marginal environment, marginal revolution blogger and economist Tyler Cohen said, um, we started building a more stupidly inducing environment. So maybe that's what's happening, but scientists are still struggling with the cause, right? Some people are blaming technology and how we've become so reliant on technology. For example, we're all reliant on GPS. You know, how many people can read a map? How many people can find somewhere they're going uh, without using their GPS? Okay, quality of what people are taking in. Um, this drop in IQ could be due to the fact that people are reading less these days and instead filling their time absorbing more trashy media. Reading less books for sure, but you know, reading online, are they reading less, right? That's the question. Uh, the quality of education has been declining pretty rapidly, a lot more in some places than other places. Another possibility might just be that the IQ tests are outdated. They tend to measure our crystallized intelligence, all the things that we've been taught and remember, and not sort of working intelligent, if you like. Education has evolved and doesn't focus as much on memorization now, right? We don't know the exact reason. So anyway, this stimulated my interest uh, in, you know, what is happening? Why are people getting dumber um, around the world? So I googled that study, the Norway study, and there's lots of articles uh, that are here, and we'll have a look at some of them. Okay, so here, uh, an article from three, four years ago, researchers find IQ scores dropping since the 1970s. Okay, um, so this paper, which I'll talk about, I'll show you the peer-reviewed paper. It's in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. It talks about the Norwegian study. Um, prior studies have shown that people grew smarter uh, from 1900 on as measured by the intelligent quotient, the IQ, and this was called the Flynn effect, like I've said. Various theories have been proposed to explain this apparent brightening of the human mind, such as better nutrition overall, better health care, better education, right? All factors that might help people grow into smarter adults than they would have otherwise. But that trend's ended. So instead of getting smarter, we're getting dumber. So here's what the study did. It looked at the IQ test results from young men entering Norway's national service. Now they had compulsory military duty and this was between the years 1970 and 2009. So 730,000 test results were accounted for. Scores declined by an average of seven points per generation, a clear reversal of test results going back approximately 70 years. They also found some differences between family groups so some of the decline might be due to environmental factors. They also suggest that lifestyle changes could account for some of the decline, changes in the education system, children reading less and playing video games more, for example. Other researchers found similar results. It's not just in Norway. So a British team found IQ score results falling by 2.5 to 4.3 points every decade since roughly the end of the Second World War. A group in the U.S. found that children eating a lot of fish tend to have higher IQs and they slept better. 
Um, children in many countries in the modern area eat very little fish, okay? So there's, so that adds some interesting things. And uh, the IQ of women became higher than that of men in 2012, okay? Um, so this psychologist, James Flynn, right, who the Flynn effect is named after, resides in New Zealand, one of the most foremost experts on intelligence testing, right? So he um, aroused people's attention around the world by proclaiming that women are now smarter than men, at least according to a standardized IQ test. He's been researching IQ level data covering the past century, uh, found that most people in developed countries were getting smarter over the years, about three points more on average per decade. Um, when IQ tests first came on the scene, women tended to score well below men, oftentimes as much as five points lower. Since that time, however, women have been growing smarter at a faster rate than men and now average a point higher than men. Okay, so they, they use this thing called the Raven's Progressive Matrices IQ test. They gave it to subjects ranging from 10 years old to 30. Um, but then in the more recent study, he restricted it to 15 to 18 year olds, presumably the age at which full intelligence has developed, but prior to being degraded by environmental factors. Okay, so then it raises the question, well, how accurate are these things? You know, in any case, a score, such tests are based on a score of 100 as signifying the average person's intelligence level. Um, okay, so anyway, 500 males and 500 females from a wide variety of so-called advanced countries like Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and Argentina were tested. Women scored a half to a whole point higher in all of them. Okay, the only exception was Israel, where men still scored a couple points higher than women. Um, okay, so this is, uh, you know, one of the, he, he's not sure why, there's different ideas. Women are expected to multitask to get jobs and go to work while still raising children. And, he, and uh, you know, one idea is that women's brains had to adjust to this, making them smarter. Okay, so uh, what, what are IQ tests really measuring? You know, um, we, we think that they're measuring intelligence, right? But there's different types of intelligence um, and there's different ways you can ask these questions. So, um, you know, another, basically there's, um, you know, I get motivation for learning is very important. Motivation for doing well on the test is important. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, people, so those, those are other factors that come into play. Anyway, uh, there, there's, and there's lots of peer reviewed papers on all of these things. Um, some of the things that lower IQ, uh, pesticide exposure is linked to lower IQ. So North Dakota farm children, those exposed to pesticides tested an average of five points lower on standard IQ tests. Um, so two groups of children in the northern Red River Valley were studied, one group living on or near an active farmer field, another at least a mile from these locations. Um, the average intelligence score for the farm children was 98, below the average IQ score of 103 for the group with lower chronic exposure to pesticides. That's raw IQ. Um, and, uh, you know, they, uh, they they looked at the do the they looked at the um, you know you can look at the pesticide concentrations in blood and urine and test you know basically look at just get a whole group of people look at the um, pesticide concentrations within their bodies um, and uh, measure their IQs so definitely lowering of IQ with pesticide exposures um, but there's other factors um, and they're covered in this paper so this is a peer reviewed paper that came out. Um, you know, recently, uh, here, you know, 2018. Okay, the Flynn effect and its reversal are both environmentally caused, is what the paper is showing. So, so the population IQ tests increased throughout the 20th century from 1900 onward up to about 1975. This is called the Flynn effect, like I've mentioned, but it's that then that effect slowed down and reversed. Um, in, in most countries actually. And there's a lot of different ideas as to what happened. 
uh, but this is the uh, measurement of the Norwegian Norwegians uh, between 1962 and 1991. Okay, um, so let's have a look at what this showed. So the Flynn effect refers to a secular increase in population intelligence quotient that's observed throughout the 20th century. The changes were rapid with measured intelligence increasing about three IQ points per decade. Um, and uh, the increase seemingly contradicted the earlier hypothesis that IQs were declining due to an inverse correlation between IQ and fertility. This is the so-called dysgenic fertility. The idea that the more kids you have, the lower their IQ becomes in subsequent kids. And they've measured this, uh, you know, this is in some families, this is a theory. Um, you know, it's not always there. Uh, but then, you know, as the world grew and people tended to have more kids, you'd think that the IQ would lower. But the IQ has actually been rising three IQ points per, per decade. Uh, but in recent years, this effect is weakened and reversed. Okay. Um, and why is this happening? Um, you know, so they tried to look at the at what was going on. Um, so, so let's have a look at some of the um, results of this paper here. Okay, so overview of the hypothesized causes for positive and negative Flynn effects. So, a genetic cause. Is there a genetic cause? Um, okay, so immigration. Um, could have caused a positive Flynn effect. Uh, the low intelligence, if, 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 the, if um, people with lower IQs have more and more children, this is, could be a genetic effect that would be a negative Flynn effect. Um, environmental factors, okay, things like, so things that increase IQ you'd think would be better health. Longer education for more people, people staying in school longer. Better nutrition, right? Better nutrition, of course, tied in with better health. Better education and school systems, that's also tied in with longer education, people going on to post-secondary, etc. Rising standards of living. Better education in families. More educated parents. If the parents are more educated, it's likely that their kids are also more educated. Um, more test experience, more so more experience writing tests in school. You know, when you write IQ tests or, or, or have IQ tests taken, um, you might do better on them. More intelligent social environment, right? You're exposed to more uh, experiences, life experiences that would make you smarter. Computers like smartphones, etc., and TV and media, double edge, right? TV and media it depends on the type of TV and media that you're watching. So negative Flynn effects, so ne things that would cause drops in IQ, migration, the stress of migration, um, changing schools all the time, et cetera, decline in educational values that would um, lower IQs, worse education and school systems would lower it, TV and media, here we go, you know, it's, it, it, appear, it can do both, it's double-edged. Worse education in families, worse nutrition, worse health. All those things could cause a negative Flynn effect. Um, also, uh, you know, positive Flynn effect could be genetic changes, more educated parents, uh, you know, different uh, genetic changes in the kids, smaller families, more able to afford to have all of their kids have better education could be a positive effect. Um, negative effects, um, migration, the low intelligent, intelligent have more children, the low intel, um, and that's a socialization effect too. So there's all of these different things. Um, here's some trends. So this is a birth year, and this is the IQ score raising. So about 1975 was the peak. And then it dropped. They should have data from, I'm not sure why they don't have data uh, going. Maybe the study ended then. Uh, they don't have data going right up to 2020 in this particular um, chart. And then the this is the IQ distribution. 100 is the peak. Um, and uh, sigma is about, uh, you know, you can see, I think it was, sigma was about 14 to 15 or 14, 15, something like that right, the, the standard deviation. 
Okay, so, um, you know, this was uh, all family. This is IQ difference from the 1975 cohort. cohort. Um, 75 here, all, fam you know, um, across family trends. Okay, two brothers sample. Uh, IQ score coverage. So they did a lot of statistical analysis. And they found, um, yeah, it peaked in about 1975, something like that. Okay, there was a couple other things I wanted to look at, but uh, uh, discussion. Um, so 1975, up to 1975 increasing, after 1975 decreasing. That's the key factor. Um, they looked at twins, they looked at uh, effects of first child, second child, third child, um, and uh, so on. Um, there was some data in Sweden taken. Okay, so anyway, this is a key finding. This is a key paper. You can look, you can look at, there's lots of details that are in there, which I'm not going to uh, discuss too much more. Um, so again, you know, this dysgenic fertility is the idea that um, there's a negative association between people's intelligence and their number of children. Okay, but there, there, there's not a lot of evidence showing that this is the reason why um, there's been the, the drop. Uh, you know, cohorts are just groups of people banded together and treated as a group. You know, a couple terms that were in the previous paper. Um, now, you know, there's some funny expressions for, um, you know, we, we all have expressions for, for, for people that we think are dumb. We don't say that out loud to them, but we probably think it, you know, hey, this person, that, you know, normally you think of something, somebody doing a really dumb thing as a part, as a part to, as a part from somebody being labeled dumb, right? There's a total difference with that. But there's some interesting expressions, dumb as a sack of hammers. So I thought, okay, what are some other ones here just for fun? So ask Reddit, you know, what is your favorite, not in the sharp, not the sharpest tool in the shed type of saying, you know, and there's all of these different sayings, the elevator doesn't go to the top floor, buttons are working, but the electricity's out, hamsters died, but the wheel is still going, tires pop, but the wheel's still spinning, right? And there's loads. And so I started looking at some more like uh, here, you know, words related to dumb, antonyms and synonyms for dumb, bird brain, bonehead, boneheaded, et cetera, airheaded. You know, there's some very interesting terms uh, to uh, that you can find here. And uh, of course, 25 creative ways to say someone is stupid. So this is interesting. A few fries short of a happy meal. Um, you know, surfing in Nebraska, I guess uh, I can't do that. Fell out of the family tree, that's interesting. Um, vacancy on the top floor, wise as the world is flat, two sheep short of a sweater, two chap chapters short of a novel. I like the, this one, sort of like an inverse Einstein. You know, if you call somebody an inverse Einstein, right, they might, uh, it might take them a minute to figure out what you're, what you're getting at. Funny expressions. Here's some more expressions. One brick short of a load, a few cars short of a deck. Uh, you know, not the sharpest knife in the drawer is a funny one. Slept his way up the food chain. That was interesting. Um, keeps his brain in good condition. As nutty as a fruitcake, as mad as a hatter. Um, I think his screen is missing a few pixels. You know, uh, verbal diarrhea and mental constipation. There you go. So there's all of these different, different expressions. Okay, so the article in on Wikipedia on the Flynn effect is quite interesting. So they talk about you know, how do we measure intelligence? What is intelligence? And there's different types of intelligence, like fluid, the idea of fluid intelligence and crystallized intelligence, like fluid intelligence being more for problem solving, uh, you know, real time uh, thinking, 
uh, versus crystallized is things that you've memorized that are sort of within you, your knowledge, general knowledge and stuff like that. There's, and there's cultural aspects of that. Um, but there's, uh, you know, here's James Flynn giving a TED Talk. I haven't listened to his TED Talk, but he talked about why our IQ levels are higher than our grandparents from a while ago. And of course, that's switching around. So the Flynn effect was strong and proposed explanations, schooling and test familiarity, um, more stimulating environment, nutrition, okay, better nutrition, infectious diseases, right? This is interesting. A uh, paper in 2009 argued that from an energetic standpoint, a developing human will have difficulty building a brain and fighting off infectious diseases at the same time, as both are very metabolically costly tasks. So if, you know, kids aren't as healthy and there's infectious diseases going around, then the IQ levels drop. So it'll be interesting to see studies of children that have been growing up during coronavirus, for example, and catching coronavirus, you know, how they fare relative to their peer, peers, you know, in the future. Um, so, uh, heterosis or hybrid vigor associated with historical reduction of the levels of inbreeding. So less and less inbreeding, people get smarter. Okay, that was one explanation of the Flynn effect. Reduction of lead in gasoline. Okay, a study found the drop in blood lead levels in the US from the 1970s to 2007. Okay, so they were using lots of lead in gas, leaded gasoline and then got rid of it and banned it. And this correlated with the four to five point increase in IQ. We know that lead in gasoline for kids in the womb and for young kids growing up is really, really harmful. You know, the crime rates go up 20 years later. And this is a very interesting long-term study. But then here's a, here, here's a curve here of this is the general increase in IQ over time. And, you know, and then it flattened out and uh, is actually, you know, dropping in, in many places. This goes up to about 2000 here. It's just one, one plot. Um, okay, so there's lots of information there. Um, environment and intelligence. Um, you know, if you look at human group differences in IQ test scores, it's estimated that genes contribute about 20 to 40% of the variance in intelligence in childhood and about 80% in adulthood. So, you know, it's sort of nature versus nurture, you know, how, what makes one intelligent and there's environmental influences, socioculture, cultural, your family, having access to resources of the home, a home life conducive to learning. You know, I think, you know, a family that has uh, lots of bookshelves and lots of books on bookshelves, you know, the kids are actually uh, more likely to enjoy reading and have higher IQ measurements on these tests simply because the books are there and not, they don't necessarily have to be read. That was an interesting uh, study. Um, peer groups on, you know, their views towards learning, education is very important training and interventions if there's problems, um, environmental enrichment, more stimulating environments, um, can increase the number of synapses in the brain, which increases synaptic activity, you know, uh, traveling is supposed to be very good for that. Uh, and then biological influences, things like nutrition, right? Very important, um, stress, Okay, uh, maternal stress levels may affect the developing child's intelligence, timing and duration of stress, maternal age, right? Younger mothers tending, uh, maternal age has been shown to be related to intelligence with younger mothers tending to have children of lower intelligence than older mothers. However, this relationship may be nonlinear for older mothers, being at increased risk of giving birth to children with Down syndrome, which greatly affects cognitive abilities. Exposures to toxic chemicals and substances like lead exposure is horrible. Huge negative effects for the inter intellectual development of a child. Prenatal exposure to alcohol. Um, there's lots of different uh, studies on, on this sort of thing. 
okay, tobacco smoking in mothers, uh, pot smoking in mothers, things like that. Um, complications in birth could be a problem. You know, they talk about the development of genius and, uh, you know, training at young ages. Um, training at an early age reduces synaptic pruning, which helps to save neurons. Like early musical training in children said to improve IQ. People, chess, people playing chess at an early age is supposed to increase IQ. A German study found that Gary Kasparov, um, the former world champion, uh, has an IQ of 135 and extreme an, an extremely good memory. Okay, so anyway, there's, there's lots, and all of these things are, of course, are a bit controversial. Um, okay, so what do I think is causing this drop in uh, in IQ? Um, well, air pollution uh, is definitely one thing. Revealed air pollution may be damaging every organ in the body, every single organ in the body from head to toe. Um, things like dementia, heart and lung disease, fertility problems, reduced intelligence uh, could be a lot from air pollution, uh, the PM 2.5 pollutions. Um, there's 8.8 .8 million early deaths each year, double earlier estimates, making air pollution is a bigger killer than tobacco smoking. Um, so well-known heart and lung damage is only the tip of the iceberg. Okay, um, ultra-fine particles pass through the lungs, they're rarely picked up by cells, and they're carried by the bloodstream to expose virtually all cells in the body. Okay, um, so things like that, uh, lungs and heart problems, brain and mind, strokes, dementia, reduced intelligence are all conditions affecting the brain that have been linked to air pollution. You know, inflammation is a problem, abdominal organs, uh, reproduction, uh, it goes on and on and on. Doctors really, you know, need to speak up according to that. So this article is just, uh, you know, you can find this. This is the title of the article. Just have a look for yourself. Um, it's in The Guardian. Okay, a couple other things. Um, this is an interesting article, Air Pollution and Non-Communicable Diseases. So it looks at, uh, you know, it's a detailed study on the risks. So how air pollution affects all of these different organs in the body. And many conditions are associated with air pollution. So all of these different things can be associated with air pollution and how it, uh, you know, the effects of how it um, does it. And it goes on to list all of the different diseases, um, decreased uh, neurological function, all of these different diseases, um, and how air pollution um, makes them worth, worse and exacerbates them. Okay, very, very detailed study. Um, this was just the difference of fluid intelligence to crystallized intelligence. And uh, what else do we have here? The Ravens progressive matrices. These are used in a lot of IQ tests, these sort of things here, you know, where you have different uh, boxes and you just, so, you know, you don't have to, it's, it tries to take out cultural influences. Um, you know, the great endumbening. Okay, this is an art, another article about IQ scores being on the decline, you know, brains in danger. Okay, so that uh, article, so the Europe, European TV channel, Art, had an hour-long documentary, Demain to Chrétien, Tomorrow Everyone's an Idiot. Okay, um, and they released this in the US, and it's called Brains in Danger. I haven't seen this, apparently it's on Amazon Prime. Okay, American consumers have long shown interest in the claim that our mental skills are shrinking over time from the internet or phones or television, from having sex or not having sex, from eating vegetables or getting fat, or from whatever other ills of modern life appear to be on our minds. Okay, um, we're just as drawn to other signs and symptoms of human degradation degeneration rather as expressed in trend lines pointing straight to hell okay uh sperm count zero no babies at all right the great and dumbing anyway there's lots of uh 
they talk about the Norwegian study. Uh, there's a movie, there's a 2006 comedy called Idiocracy, which is, uh, you know, which is actually apparently very, very interesting, very relevant to, you know, um, what's going on with people. Drops in sperm counts are mentioned, things like, all kinds of thing, fun things like that. So this is the, this is a 2006 uh, documentary, Private Joe Bowers, a decisively average American is selected as a guinea pig for a top secret hibernation program, but is forgotten, awakening to a future so incredibly moronic, he's easily the most intelligent person alive. There you go. So that sort of idea. And uh, there's books, of course, many books of this, uh, this sort of thing. And anyway, this is not mentioned in any of those studies. And I want to end off here. Uh, you know, if we look at, uh, you know, the CO2, the Keeling curve, the latest CO2 levels, the full record, 1975, you know, uh, 330 or so, you know, here we are, 420. Okay. What if there's a threshold effect? We know that CO2 uh, affects people's cognition, affects people's ability to focus. If they're in a stuffy room and there's lots of CO2, people yawn, get tired. We know that there's an effect of people's intelligence on CO2 levels. And if there's nonlinear effects, when we pass a certain level, that could reduce uh, people's IQ. So this is, uh, you know, I mentioned, I talked about those papers on air pollution. It could actually not just be the what's in the air, the particles that are in the air, but it could also be the actual chemi chemical composition of the air with more and more of the greenhouse gases. And uh, that could be a big factor, I think, in dropping people's IQ. Well, thank you for listening and please consider going to my website and, uh, you know, paulbeckwith.net and, uh, you know, consider making a donation to PayPal to support my uh, videos and research. Okay, thanks a lot and bye for now.